What up, fellas? Very excited to start this new text clinic. Where we're going to go through all your screenshots and all the questions you have for us with your texting conversation. So let's jump right into it. All right. Nick, knew you'd be happy. I love it. There are a couple things they're going to throw at you. And we'll see the patterns in these messages. Cool, my hunter. I have this girl I went out with last night. She kind of threw me a curveball with the last part after our date last night when she texted today. And you got a bunch of updates. Let's check it out. Hey, how'd you sleep? Pretty good. How about you? Cool. Me too. Drinks again sometime? What are you trying to get out of this though? That's funny. Sweet. What do you mean? <laughs> Very excited. Never mind. That's funny. You questioned it. What do you mean? What are you trying to get out of this? That was a good response. He said, I mean, it just means that something on the date didn't happen or like the date was the issue, not the texting at all, right? Especially after you see the girl, the texting after you see a girl and like things go well, I think it's a lot easier. You don't, you don't have to be like honing in the schedule and finding the, the free day before you even ask for the thing. It's just like, when are you free? So she probably felt like you have no clue what you want or what you're trying to do. And you might just want her for, for intimacy and then never talk to her again on the date. So it's probably all of the date that were really kind of is the 80, 20, as far as what happened and what, what went wrong. Sweet. What do you mean? Never mind. That was super, you know, difficult, closed off playing games. Hello. I wasn't looking for hookups, but see, you said the thing she was talking about, but she didn't say it. So she's covert. What are you trying to get out of this? Trying to, trying to get out of this though, dough. It takes more effort to not say trying to in like disable the autocorrected trying to word. Dude, trying that. It's very funny. <laughs> I don't know why people talk like that. It's crazy. What are you trying to get? Trying to get out of this dough. Sweet. I would be like, I don't even respond to the sweet. I'd be like, what do you mean trying to get out of this? Never mind. You can't give her what she was trying to say. She's covert. And then you're like over it as fuck. Like over it 100%. Over it, over it, over it, over it. Right. You did all the work for her. She brought up an issue. And then you found out the issue and, and like solved the issue before she even said it was an issue. You can't do that. Men do it all the time. What are you trying to get out of this? And she says, never mind. You should be like, never mind, question mark. That's a weird behavior to be like, never mind. Like, like playing games. What do we five? What do you mean, never mind? You just asked me a question. You're not going to, you're not going to clarify your question. I mean, I guess this is some sort of gaslighting, right? Never mind. Like it's playing games and playing dumb, playing naive. You don't even care. LOL. So you're already laughing at like the possibility of her having a serious conversation. So definitely not a good thing to do. I wasn't looking for hookups. So now you, it, you immediately answered what you thought she was talking about with her not having to admit what she was talking about. So she's being passive slash passive aggressive with her like questions here and you you actually are being kind of serious. Like, what do you mean? She goes, never mind. So she's very passive slash passive. That's that's the definition of passive aggressive behavior. And then you're you're just throwing shit at the wall and hopefully it works and sticks, but giving away like you're showing your card. You don't want to do that. I'd be like, what do you mean, never mind? You just you, it seems like you have an issue. And then she would go, What do you think she would say if you said that? What do you mean, never mind? It seems like you had seems like you had something you want to ask. I was clarifying. What did you mean? And she could be like, Oh, well, you know, I'm just wondering where, you know, what you're looking for because, you know, I don't I don't want to just like go around, you know, hooking up with people or do one night stands or, you know, I'm not looking for just a random hookup. Like she'll say something along the lines of that. And then after she said the thing that she's worried about and she did the work because she brought up an issue that like could cause chaos, that question, thing she's bringing up is a disqualifier. If you say the wrong thing, you're out. Right? It's not like an issue to solve to like make her happy. It's an issue that you have to solve. If you don't, she's not going to respond to you. It's a big difference. But you so see, you said like, no, I was looking for hookups, but more relationship. What do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean more relationship? You mean all relationship? The problem is that is it's like a lose-lose situation. I wasn't looking for hookups. Okay, but you said it. So clearly it's it's probably a lie because you had to say that. What do people, what do guys who want only hookups say? I'm not looking for hookups. Like that's like, right? But more relationship. What does more relationship mean? That means nothing. More relationship. You mean all relationship? Right? That's a big difference. And then the issue with that is that when you say relationship, you, now it's too heavy and serious. It's too soon to say the word relationship like that in that context. Because now you're like, oh, you want to date me now? And she's like, I don't even know if I was going to respond to you this morning. Morning, and you already asked him like date each other or like bring it up. I know you're not saying like I want to date you, but you're pretty much saying that's what I want. I want a full blown relationship, which obviously doesn't set the good frame because now she wants to you know wait, play games, make you work for it in a very negative kind of one sided way. What do you want? Same. So she's a one word answer. Like you, like this is not the perfect like operant conditioning punishing for your compliance. She has this stupid thing she says. You go sweet. What do you mean? Like you clarify. She plays games, acts dumb and naive and and difficult. You clarify. Give her all the info she was looking for without her having to ask any questions then you ask her one word answer like if this is, isn't the most unappeasable person in the world the immature feminine i don't know what else is, is like and you try to continue the conversation at this point you should like the message she's being difficult she doesn't deserve any more responses you just like the message that's it the problem with men is like they just keep pushing forward no matter the behavior they're getting back it's like they it's like they oh i'll just ignore their weird passive aggressive difficult behavior and just keep moving it forward but like at the end of the day you did all of the work they didn't invest at all they didn't even like really want this because like you didn't pull back for a second. You didn't give them any space to invest. 
if you just liked her message and didn't respond to her for like a few hours, she probably would double text you. When are you, when are you free? She'd probably say something to, to push the interaction forward, right? You don't want to be pushing it forward yourself because you're just like, you're doing all this work and you're investing. And now you want it. Now it's the sunk cost fallacy. I want all this return on my investment. No, it's got to be equal. Cool. You had bad experiences? Yeah, I've had a few. So she's super difficult, like so difficult. But if you're watching this, you can't move forward in the conversation if she says this to you. You're not allowed to move forward. If you move forward, we can't help you. See how that works? I've had a few. Is that a difficult thing she said? Probably the most difficult, closed off, closed minded, avoidant type of attachment style and response there is right here. Yeah, I've had a few. Like you, you're doing all the heavy work and heavy lifting here. And she's just like, gotcha, that stinks. Like, do you see how much work and effort you're putting in? You're like building a fucking marble. Like, you know, SpongeBob when he's building the marble. And she's just like sitting there reading a newspaper as you're building the whole fucking statue. We should go to the zoo sometime. <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? You said drinks again. And she said, yes. I'm glad we're doing this because I need you to rewatch this video a thousand times. You need to you need to go back and take notes on everything I said on every message. I can't skip through this and be like, oh, what do I do now though? This is going to happen over and over again if you don't change the behavior, right? Yeah, I've had a few. Again, like the message doesn't, doesn't deserve a response now. You already said drinks. So for you to go be like, let's go to the zoo. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. I don't think it's for you to decide. No one cares what Hunter feels as far as the fun and happy. And it sounds super harsh, right? But this is how it works. You care about her having fun. Don't tell her that'll be fun. And you said declarative, declarative, declarative. You just declared things. You didn't ask her a question. There's no curveball here. You're throwing, you're throwing change ups in, in knuckleballs at her. <laughs> I'm surprised she's even responding. See now. And then she, and then she throws a curveball at you. The curveball is like, yes, please. With three E's as if like, she's really happy and you hit the nail on the head, even though you completely misdirected it, ignored all of her difficult one word answers. And you already, she already agreed to drinks so let's do let's commit to let's do this thing like the zoo that makes it certain that we don't spend time together afterwards and you're in the middle of the day what like 12 p.m in the sunlight all sweaty looking at animals and you don't talk to her gets no her at all because she's looking at the animals all day don't go to the zoo sweet i hope we, we see the animals no more saying statements like i hope we see or that would be fun like those are declaratives new video coming out four types of sentences sweet with three t's because she said please with three e's no definitely don't <laughs> Like you're doing all of the work. She has asked you zero questions. Yes, please love the zoo. So let's, so let's do this thing that like I get attention. You take me around the zoo. You pay for everything. You pick me up too. You do all the work. She just sits there and doesn't do anything or like ask questions or build a connection with you because she's looking at the animals all day. I hope we see the animals. What else would you see at the zoo? The only thing you would see are the animals. If there's no animals at a zoo, that's not a zoo. It's just a jungle gym, right? Or red pandas. How about you? Good luck finding a red panda in Missouri, right? Where are you? Um, like just how about you is the like HBY. That that's her participation. You know when they do like participation credit in high school? She get a she get a negative hundred percent HBY. That's the question she asks you. That's her when it when it comes to asking questions to. That's how much she respects you as a HBY when it comes to a random animal that no one cares about. Don't ask her questions about what her favorite animal is. This is like the trap men fall into. It's like, what? what's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? No one cares. Girls don't care. No one cares. I don't even know what my favorite color is anymore. That was like a middle school thing to care about, right? No one, that's not, that's doesn't, that doesn't make up somebody's personality. And also that, that's not what you as a man should be focusing on with the girl at all. You should be talking to her, talk about herself, deep comfort stories to make her feel all these feelings and emotions and associate them with you because she trusts you with how she feels around you. And then now you guys are actually connecting and bonding, right? That's like an actual healthy, assertive way to build a real, genuine, masculine, feminine dynamic, right? Not by asking like what her favorite animal is. And then you're saying yours. Sting, are you like, again, oh, I remember you saying that. Declarative. So you declared it, right? It's four types of sentences. Declarative, interrogative, imperative, exclamatory. Declarative is saying, stating facts. I remember you saying that. You declared it. I like the stingray declared it. There's no room for a conversation when you just declare things. It's like Michael Scott running, walk, walking out of the office and just saying, I declare bankruptcy! No one is required to respond to him or answer him. See that? So you almost should be saying zero declaratives. Almost zero. It's all inter interrogatives. Oh, they're cute. Now look, you didn't say uh, an interrogative. She actually responded. They're cute. Yes, how was dog sitting today? Okay. How about how was your day? Because how was dog sitting? It's such a specific thing that she doesn't even care about. I'm saying it the house till Saturdays, but it was okay. There you go. Couldn't get in the house for a hot minute, but I got if it Figured out. Look at that. Look at her investing now. This is cute. Look how cute this is. Declaratives. Look at this. Four lines of sentences. When you ask about what? How her day is. How's dog sitting? Now she responds. You ask about stingrays, red pandas, and if she wants to go to the zoo, she gives you three word answers. You ask about how her day is, she gives you four lines. You see that? Nice. Gotcha. Ah, that's good that you got in. Sometimes new places are tricky. This is like a middle school paper or essay or like a high school essay when you're trying to add words to hit the word count for the essay. 
you just like keep typing like statements that don't really make any sense. The same sentence, but different words over and over again to get the word count up. <laughs> nice gotcha. Oh, that's good that you got in. Like, do you see how the feeling was that she said to you, which she opened up a bit. You saw her like a little glimpse of her personality for a second of what she was feeling. I couldn't get in the house for a hot minute, but I got it figured out. So she's probably a Libra because she balanced it. A regular person, not like a person who needs things to be like down the middle and on the fence. They would go like, yeah, I couldn't get in the house for a hot minute. That's what a normal person would say. They wouldn't end it with, but I got it figured out. Because if you take both sides of a, a, a statement, now there's nothing for the person you said that statement to to say. People don't understand that. It's crazy. It's like, yeah, it's hot out, but it was cold yesterday, so it's fine. What are you going to say to that? It, but if, like, imagine if I said, like, yeah, it was hot yesterday. The other person would be like, oh, yeah, but it was cold yesterday, so it's a good balance. It's a horrible conversation. I'm going to jump off the bridge just even listen to myself or balcony. But at least it's like filling the polarity of the conversation. When people do this, I couldn't get in the house for a hot minute, but I figured it out, so no worries. You're just like, are you talking to yourself out loud? Like, I'm here, like I'm a person. Like, this is how you get things done. You like say out things to yourself out loud, like, both sides of it. Like, if I if I take the highway, I get there faster, but there's traffic. If I take the back roads, it's slower, but no traffic. Okay, did you have a question for me? <laughs> like, well, what's going on? Um, but you have, to, you have to still work with this. I couldn't get in the house for a hot minute, but I got to figure it out. So what would be the feeling that she exhibited there or felt that she would want to talk about if you can't get in the house bro and you're trying to dog sit and there's a dog was waiting for you inside imagine you're trying to get in the house and you couldn't get in the house because like the key wasn't there the person said it was under the rug but it's not there the dog's at the door he's like begging to get out he's about to like pee on the floor it's up to you all weekend to take care of this dog you couldn't get in the house what are you gonna feel anxious right nervous frustrated a little scared fear all those things she felt those things at one point she's gonna want to talk about it even if she was, she got in fine she still felt all those all those feelings were ruffled up in her in her body in her chest probably feeling it right here right? it's still there because she still felt the feeling she got in sure there's a little bit of a relief but she still feels the feeling she's gonna want to talk about that feeling especially the, the anxiety nice you don't need ah gotcha nice all that stuff that's way too many words oh no that must have been stressful right labeling her emotion and now you understood like even though she said that she got in you're probably still feel stressed or feel stressed at the time and i can relate to that or at least empathize with you and like call it out and i want to talk about it because you have to understand like her feelings and how she feels does not affect you or should not affect you at all it does not mean that she disapproves of your behavior or that you're less of a man because she's feeling negative at the time she in fact wants to talk about it that's how she feels happy and fulfilled right so the more you talk about her feelings especially any any feeling right negative positive whatever it is the more she feels fulfilled and happy which is what you should be doing all day anyways um update here we go see how like you're asking every single question like every single thing and you're saying statements too. I've been there before. I just don't remember there's a door that doesn't lock. Not like see how she's talking about nonsense. You're following down this rabbit hole and she's just saying nonsense, nonsense, nonsense that like she doesn't even care about. But you're like, you're putting a lot of effort and attention on it. The only thing you should be thinking about is like, when are we going to see each other? Right? You already said drinks. What's the next thing to say when she says yes for drinks? When are we going to see each other? That's the only thing that matters. Not anything else, do it after you lock down a day or lock down the time or day or the place, whatever it is. Now you can talk about her day and all this nonsense because she, she has, she knows that I didn't agree to see him he's just doing this like for what to get my attention does he really need my attention that bad hmm. is he less of a man or more of a man because he wants my attention this bad without any logistical time to see me i've been there before i just don't i just remembered there's a door that doesn't lock okay so she's forgetful and locks herself out it's cute but like nonsense right ah okay like you're just a lot of ah okay morning doing anything this weekend like a lot of questions it just feels like you're not really listening and letting her invest at all you're just like constantly having to ask a question to keep her answering which forces her to only be on defense by barely giving you like any responses, right? Uh, nothing besides dog sitting Friday, but I have an appointment to get my bracelet put back on. And again, why are we why would we never ask doing anything this weekend? Because she's gonna tell you what she's doing. She's not gonna tell you what she's when she's free. Okay, would you be able to go out with the dogs, or would you have to stay there? Like she definitely can leave. She doesn't have to stay at the house all day every single day. Like dogs can be fine, you know, for hours. She feeds them and takes them out to the bathroom every you know three four hours, whatever it is. I wouldn't ask her that. But there's no curveball yet. I don't know what the curveball is. And like, again, you're going to like Starbucks Park. You already said drinks. There's like three different things we could do during the Sag. You got to focus on one thing. You said drinks. You said zoo. Now you said Starbucks and park. That's four things. The only thing you should do with her drinks. And you're like, you're, everything else is just so, you self-sabotaging. I can go out a little, but not for long since they're old boys. So that makes no sense. It's usually the puppies that have to go to the bathroom more often and be, you know, watched more. Okay, all good. Uh, again, no, you don't need to say all good because you're, you're like you're signing judgment as if like you're allowing her, allowing that to be all good. We could get some Starbucks slash park if we have time to come back there and come time and come back there. What do you 
what want to do tomorrow yes yeah, so you're already assuming like to hang out at the house your house sitting which <laughs> i love it you're like passive and really hesitant to ask her if she's able to leave the house without the dogs but you're extremely aggressive when you're like we could just go right back to your house after starbucks like it makes no sense right it's very inconsistent behavior and then you don't even ask her if she wants to do that you just ask her if she wants to do tomorrow we're gonna do this but you want to do it tomorrow it's like a false dichotomy it's like you want to do tomorrow or you want to do the next day well, it's like, I never told you I want to do it at all. You don't want to do that because you're, you're, you're demanding. This is, this is an imperative here. And then an interrogative about like a logistical rather than if she wants to do it at all. Yeah, I can hang tomorrow. It's great. So like even through, even with you stumbling through all this, she still said I can hang tomorrow. It was great. She actually likes you, right? At least to a certain degree. I'll actually be back at my own apartment sometime around six. You want to meet up? Dude. Like, what do you mean she threw you curveball? You were throwing her knuckleballs, sliders, and curveballs. You didn't hit us one strike. <laughs> I don't mean to, I, we know you know we love you here. You didn't throw one strike, and she throws a fucking meatball down the center right here. What do you mean you? She threw you curveball, <laughs> and she says bet. Okay, sweet, that would work. Of course it would work. You don't need to. People don't understand this. Is like when you say all good or like, that'll work, that works, or I'm okay with that. No one cares. Right? No one asked for your approval. That's the problem. I don't mean to be harsh, but like I'm just saying in general, no one asked for your approval. Right? No one asked for like really understand this. No one asked for your approval. So you giving your approval makes it seem like you're dominating her. You see that? You never. People do it all the time. It's mind blowing. Like people, they say words that dominate, but they don't even realize it. Oh, subconsciously they do because they want to feel like they're dominating. But like that would work. Of course it would work. She said it. She should be in charge here. She's a, she's a girl and you're like in an attraction phase. She should be the one with the power and like feeling powerful, right? Of course. That would work. Like you're putting your like approval on it as if like you need to give approval here. No, no approval. Okay, sweet. You're like exclamation point. Like you don't need to say exclamation point, right? I can pick you up some time around then that we can go. Like again, you're, you're stating imperatives. You're demanding. I can pick you up and then we'll, and then we can go i guess it's a declarative whatever but like you're 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 not asking her like if she said i don't know how you got here i don't know how she said that she somehow she likes you maybe the date went well it's comfortable it's mind-blowing she said after all you said drinks you said the zoo you talked about red pandas and stingrays you talked about starbucks in the park and you talked about how like that would be fun and you want to see i hope we see the animals and somehow she still says i can hang tomorrow come by my house at six come to my house i don't know how we got here hunter Maybe it's the photos and the date, but the texting, you know, we got, that's why we're here. Okay, sweet. That would work. I can pick you up around, but no, you, you don't want to just declare things and give commands all day. You should be giving zero commands with a girl you're going on a date with that you have not been with before. You should zero commands, negative commands. You should only be asking questions, only asking questions. Maybe a declarative here or there, only questions. That every question gets you one step closer to seeing her. Not like, what's your favorite animal or, or like, want to go to the park and see the, and see the animals. I'll actually be at my own apartment sometime around six. If you just want to meet up later. It's six o'clock, so probably six thirty-seven. She's actually ready to go. She's probably not going to want to go to the zoo. The zoo probably closes at six, anyways. Go to the park. Stark out. Starbucks a little late for caffeine. What do you think? Drinks. The only thing you should, ever should do. That's what happens when you say like, declare it to somebody. They go bet, or they don't respond. Usually don't respond. Bet. What are we in like South Florida in middle school? Bet. Like right, you should never say the word bet ever. Um, cool. Have you tried the new Starbucks? Okay. Where are we getting this from? Star Why are we going to Starbucks? No, no Starbucks. We've never told you to go to Starbucks. Never go to Starbucks. You're not allowed to say the word Starbucks, park, or zoo anymore. anymore. Go to the zoo or Starbucks or the park when you're dating her. You're not even close to dating her. That's later. Um, <laughs> I don't mean to be so harsh on you. I hope that helps. Saw her. Was that Saturday? Yeah, we got to do these things a little bit sooner, right? Because the, the messages probably are pretty timely. Yeah, no, we saw that. Cool. Next question. Here we go. Match the girl in Bumble pulled her to IG. But I wouldn't say pulled. I'll um, just say, like, got her, got her IG. Went to IG. Asked her a logistical question to, then about to then ask about schedule, but she never responded to my first question. Do I circle back in a week? Leave her behind? Would my IG compo need to be adjusted? Kornashkan, you both have access. Yeah, just like, just see the investment with the bubbles. She said one, one word, one word, one word. Right, and you said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So you see fourteen words, she said three. So obviously it's a massive discrepancy with it in terms of investment. Look at the bubble size, the amount of words, characters compared to the other person. If you're saying a lot more, you're doing everything wrong. Everything's wrong. But guys are so trained to kind of brainwash to carry the weight of the conversation, always be the one that takes the high road and does says all the extra words to make sure everyone feels okay. It's a combination of like being kind of conditioned and brainwashed to doing it in the feminized society, like do every all of the work and then also it's like insecurity of like filling all the gaps of the awkwardness because you don't know how to act like if she's giving you nothing you should almost be giving her nothing back that's an equal exchange of investment people don't jump to enlightened from shame as far as the consciousness level if 
clear at grief, apathy, guilt, and shame as far as the level of consciousness. That's at the bottom of the level. They can't jump the freaking love and peace. They got to go through each step. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Google Map of Consciousness by David um, Hawkins. She's at almost apathy. She said hi with a smiley face and she didn't even put a space between it. Come on. At least she didn't put the parenthesis backwards, like the, the sad face, but the colon on the wrong side. Thank God she didn't do that. <laughs> you see her like, good morning, Ash. Monkey face. None of you didn't say that. All you needed to say was hi, drink sometime. Sure. Cool, comma. What's your IG? I would also do a, so you didn't do a uh, space here. Now it's like, now it seems like you don't know how to, like, how to use punctuation. And you have a comma. So you're very formal. Other than that, like, you were like, this is good because like you don't really need her to say anything else other than sure. Right? It's not inv not much investment, but it's like the right investment. Cool. It's your IG. She says the name. Awesome. Just sent you a message. You don't need to say that, right? Again, I, th I think if you were on the, the call the other day, you know, just followed, like you need to send that. You can't say anything else, right? Just send you a message. Who's doing all the work to get the, their attention, someone's attention? Who's doing all the work? Nick is, of course. Nick's doing, in this message right here, you did 90% of the work to, to like move this interaction forward. Yes, you both match. She matched with you and she matches first. Cool, neat. Still. 85% of the work you did it, including all the amount of texts and words you said, right? And it doesn't feel equal. Like you're sending her a message. You asked her out. You asked her what her IG is. At least save it at the end with like, here's mine. Because now she has to like recognize that's your account. You just followed her. She got to follow you back. Hey, Ashley, you don't need to say her name, right? And obviously she knows that you can see your name. So you don't need to say any of that. Hey, how's your day? That's all you need to say. Hi, Nick. Now it's awkward. She's like repeating your name, smiley face. Like she said this smiley face how many times now? Or to every message she sent, she's had a smiley face. No more smiley faces. Hi, Nick. How are you? Like the most superficial, everyone's using a smiley face. Like every, this is extremely passive behavior, right? Everyone's kind of fake. You're not, no one's as happy ever, period. Even if you are, you don't talk like this. What would you actually say to someone? Hey, how's your day? But yeah, like no wonder. She's just, it's a super superficial. She knows you're faking your entire personality. Like no, she has not seen the real once and up here just and definitely don't type with like three you see it's three lines of text here with the space it's still three lines of text right and like you're you're typing like uh email this is like an email my like uh, a parent would send like this is a what a boomer parent would send a kid texting but he thinks it's an email and he like puts his like name at the at the bottom of the text like dash you know bobby but he types in like a like an email setting like hi sandra today was warm outside i have submitted the paper i look forward for your response bobby in a text like that's kind of what it reminds me of, right? You don't want to do that. Um, doing well. If you don't invest in the conversation, they're not going to invest in the conversation, especially when you don't have, when the people, the people that are like hold, there's, there's a couple nuances to it, but like if they're not giving you anything, the one technique to social engineering technique is to give a little first to then warms them up to then them give back to you because people will only invest the same amount that they think you'll invest into them in the conversation. So if they feel like you're giving them nothing, you literally go, hey, Ashley, it's Nick. So you said a declarative twice. Hey, it's Nick. Like you're declaring things. We know it's your name says it on your Instagram account. It says three times, I think, in this chat, in the DM. You don't ever need to say your own name and especially say that it's your name as if that's an important message to send first. Never need to say it again. Ask about her. What is she doing? What are you up to? Where are you from? What's your schedule like this week? Right? It's all, it's all about her. And get right to it. Cut through the clutter immediately. No hey ass. She knows her name. She knows your name, right? I don't want to keep harping on this. I hope that helps, bro. Because if girls are just seeing it going nowhere, like they're the ones that should be saying the fluff and the declaratives and the and the exclamatories, not the men. The men should only be almost almost always be saying interrogative. We've gone over this a lot. We've obviously told you to not send this. And it's all it's in the HSA module as far as like never doing these things like send say their name and say your name. Doing well, how's your day? I mean, I would just post cool stuff, post cool stories. She's watching your story. And then, I mean, she doesn't respond to it's Like, you got to post a lot. Post more, right? Magic conch. Do nothing, post a lot more. She'll see you're a cool guy and be like, mm, even though he was kind of weird on text and like very superficial and like didn't go anywhere with it. Here's the problem. She sees you're extremely ineffective with moving the ball forward. What does that say about in general when it comes to women and how he asserts himself in, in communication and also physically and emotionally? Is it going to be hard to open up and like really get a full, deep, fulfilled, em emotional, energetic, and physical, you know, penetration from he's going to understand me entirely. We're going to have like an amazing roller coaster journey. He's going to understand, care, reassure, and respect me and make me feel all these butterfly feelings, right? She thinks the opposite because you're like, hey, it's not like it's like an email right? do you see how she thinks the opposite because you can't penetrate her. i'm not just saying like physically like emotionally like psychologically all spiritually all this kind of stuff right so you better be very intentful with every word especially on text because they you're competing with all the other people you get to cut right through the clutter you can't do any any fluff or bs right so, but as far as like next steps just magic contract right? high set of stuff post high set of stuff on your story keep clicking on this and not reading it i had a girl for a first date 
tonight, and after she sent this, nothing weird happened on the date, and I thought it went good. I'm okay. Whenever guys say this, I know something weird happened on the date. <laughs> okay, thank you for asking. My dad and coworker took a, a took a look at it for me, and I just need a new brake pack. Okay, so we're talking about a car. We're talking about car brake pack. Okay, so if, if anybody doesn't know, hunt Sagittarius, and the Sagittarius is, is symbolized by an archer. So imagine like a guy with a bow and arrow, and the archer shoots his bow at things, or his, his arrows at things. It's on, like imagine like a bow that, or arrow, arrows on fire, and he's shooting his arrow at things. He's just like sniping stuff from like hundreds of yards away, just like sniping it. And what I mean by that is, like, how do we get to like, she needs new brake pads, and my dad just took care of it. Like now we're on a new thing. Let's go to the park and we see the red panda sniping. Like we go super deep very quickly and then we're on the next thing. And on the next thing. And on the next thing. <laughs> if you don't believe in astrology, I didn't for a while. But pr prove me wrong. Is that not exactly what's happening here? That's good. Easy fix. Nice. So you see how you're like, you're giving your opinion. Like you're giving your opinion. You're giving your opinion. You're giving your opinion. That's a big thing too. Men give unsolicited advice to solve problems that women are bringing to the man. But the girl doesn't want you to solve a problem at all. She wants no problem solved. At least when she's being emotional and like feeling through her issues no problem like easy fix you give your opinion no like don't do not say your opinion ever do never say your challenge never say your opinion zero percent of the time nice that's good nice easy fix so like just fluff right this is all fluff this, nothing was said here right i hate to be harsh but like if i don't do this because i've seen this hundreds of times from you we gotta we gotta be very harsh with certain things to like make sure you understand like this is all fluff do never send any of these things ever again what i mean by that is we said that's good easy fix nice it's three rewards it's all fluff though you didn't need any of that. Head of that way, I'll be there in 20 minutes. All you could all you could say is, I'll be there in 20. I'm headed that way. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. How many words is that? 11. I'll be there in 20. 20 minutes, I guess is two words. You, you, you didn't put a space, so I guess one more, but two words. 20 minutes. See how simple it is? Associate the more simple, concise, in few words you choose to say, the more effective your communication is, the faster you get your result. Say it again. The less words you use, the more effective the communication, the faster you get your result. We need a three-step process. We need to put that, we need a tattoo on people's heads. I'll tattoo on my forehead. See you soon. Cool, I'm here at the front. I wouldn't say that. I'd just be like, I would just be pulling up. All right, that's the only thing you should say. Um, like she should say, I'm here at the front. I'm waiting for you. I'm at the, I'm at the front door. Like she should say that. She's like giddy and like, I'm excited. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Did you say nothing happened on the date? Of course something happened on the date. Nothing weird happened on the date. I thought it went good. So 100% something weird happened on the date. And something didn't go good. Leave with her. Maybe for you it went fine. Sure, perfect. That's amazing. Her doesn't seem like it at all. Thank you again for today. So if a girl says that to you first, you know the BS is coming. I'd love to be friends with you if we're all right. No, I'm not looking to date anyone for a while. Then why did you show up on a date with me and match me on a dating app? I'm just waiting for God's timing and needed some healing in my heart. From what? But it's really good to see you. See you? Have you seen her multiple times? I had fun. Good to see you. You say this to someone that you haven't seen in a while. Right? It was good to meet you. That's what you say if you just met somebody. I had fun. I hope you did too. Well, you didn't ask me, so you have no idea. And know that if you ever need prayers for anything, I'm always here. What the hell does that mean? Like she'll pray for you if you ask her to? I hope you can remain friends. And you say, welcome, no worries. Oh my God. Yeah, definitely, definitely never. Like, here's the problem. You're very agreeable, which is good in a lot of senses. It's a very good trait to have. Being agreeable, what are the, what are the qualities, right? Um, shows a lot of interest in people. You usually care about other people. You feel empathetic. You love helping. Problem with that is when you're too far, like when you're too high on the agreeableness scale, scale with the big five personality trait, people walk all over you and then you agree with them. People say horrible things and unfair things to you and you agree with them. It's a combination of the passive um, communication style with an extremely agreeable personality trait. That's not a good combination. Right? You want to be assertive and you want to be like 70 percentile, 70 percent on the agreeableness because you're agreeable enough. We don't let people take, take advantage of you. You don't feel bad about not letting them take advantage of you. We're not going to be friends. You don't even, Do you like this girl to be friends with her? Is she adding enough value to your life to actually keep her in your life just as a friend? Of course not. Right? So that's not okay. No, there is worries. There's a lot of worries, right? I'd be like, that's strange. And like for her to throw, whenever girls throw God in like to their justification for them being toxic, it's the same thing as like yoga or spiritual or, you know, with God or religion. Whenever girls use that as like an excuse for their behavior, it's just like super toxic. Like I didn't even say this. I'm not the only one, the one saying this who like came up with this. The girls I know who work in spiritual yoga establishments, they run in the circles, they go to events, communities. They admit and tell me like, yeah, everyone who does yoga and in the spiritual is like super toxic 
And I'm like, what? And she goes, or, you know, I've heard this multiple times, but one girl recently was like, yeah, because they're, they're, they feel so awful about their behavior. They can't just handle them being manipulative or, you know, tyrannical, aggressive with their behavior. So they have to be a part of and force themselves to be a part of this thing that kind of balances them out for just merely being associated with it. So if like, they're like tyrannical and like aggressive with their communication, if they say they're spiritual, it balances them out. It creates this balance, right? In this case right here, she it can't own up to her feelings, can't tell you what actually happened or what she actually was, you know, didn't like about the date. Because just saying I'm not looking at anyone for a while, you just then what like how unfair is that for Hunter to be misled to go on a date with this girl? I'm assuming you after you matched on a, a dating app, right? You didn't say where she came from, but you, you matched on a dating app, I'm assuming. Unless you cold approached her, which would make a little bit more sense, but still she agreed to a date. I'm not looking to date anyone for a while. That would have been good to know before I went on the date with you. Right? You ever watch um Wedding Singer? That would have been useful information yesterday. <laughs> um so it's like a sandwich, right? Like, thanks for everything. And then she immediately goes to the real stuff she wanted to say. I'd love to be friends with you. Why would Hunter want to be friends with her? What what, what, what will she do for your life? How would she add? Is she going to help you, like, scale your, like, your uh, course and build your mentorship and, like, be a consistent teammate and, like, do sales for you? Is she going to get you more girls? If not, then how is she going to help your life? Why, why would you want to be friends with her? Like, what? It makes no sense to be friends with her unless you're, like, romantically in interested in, in each other. I'm not saying she, she can't do this. Of course, not at all. I'm just saying the way she went about it, super passive and passive aggressive and like kind of like made it seem like it's God's fault and like she's all conveniently not looking to date somebody and it was really good to see you. It was good to see you, but after the date, I don't want to date anyone anymore. Like, how is that not the most passive aggressive thing ever? It was really good to see you. I had so much fun, but I never want to date anybody because of you. Like, how is that not the most passive aggressive thing in the world? I had fun. Hope you did too. Did you? Because you just now don't want to date anybody after having fun. That's crazy. Do you have fun and not want to date people a lot? <laughs> and know that if I'm, you ever need prayers like she's gonna do this favor for you and like pray for you who cares dude what a f way to it's a red herring like completely deflect and go, completely change subject when she had this thing to, she could easily have said what would be better her to say all this nonsense and confuse you i had fun not looking to date want to be friends i love seeing you it was really good seeing you i had fun hope you did too not looking to date god's timing we can remain friends i'll pray for you right would you want that confusion bubble of nonsense manipulation or just her not to respond i'll tell you which one's better than the, the latter her not responding because guess what she can't go back on her word now right even though women don't really care about their word she can't go back on this. She committed to it. One of the main cognitive biases of the human brain, commitment consistency bias. If I say something out loud, there's a very high pressure to maintain what I said and do it. If she says, I want to be friends with you, it's a very high pressure to keep that commitment to herself and you because she, she told you. So for her to say this is nonsense. Clearly something happened. I'm assuming it had to do with like asking random questions about random things that you really don't care about, but you pretend to care about. And we're talking about brake pads and, you know, you know, her dad fixing her car. Like, I'm assuming it has something to do with this. You know what I'm saying? Like this kind of communication. I know it's before the date, but still, like, I'm sure, I'm sure things like that happen on the date. We got to go, you got to watch the HSA modules though, because we talk about what to say, what to ask. Like we go super in depth. Oshkan talks about this a lot as far as breaking rapport, building comfort, escalating, all that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's high level stuff. That's the only thing you should be focusing on. Logistics, only two things, right? So anything else like brake pads or, you know, what, what kind of car sh like she got for Christmas when she was in high school like even that would actually be okay but still wear and tear maintenance problems of a car no it doesn't it's not something to really be talking about all right guys <laughs> hope you like this first text clinic we uh we went on for 50 minutes i said a lot of crazy stuff in this video hope you enjoyed talk to you soon peace hope you liked that video and if you want me to break down your instagram profile and give you actionable tips on how to transform your brand into celebrity like status so you're able to attract your dream girl network with high status people or build your business on instagram click the link in the description and i'll review your instagram page completely for free again if you want me to transform your instagram page into a celebrity like status brand click the link in the description completely for free and i'll give you an instagram audit I'll see you soon.